Welcome back to the virtual classroom of Kembe School of Chemistry. Sound clear? Today I'll be starting on uh, chemical formulae. I'll be explaining how to write chemical formulae. And um, when the formula is given how to write the name and the name is given how to write the formula and a balancing of chemical equations. Uh, remember we don't uh, memorize the formulae. Formulae is a plural of formula, right? Uh, rather, we derive the formula with the help of the valency of the elements and the radicals. I will shortly explain what are radicals. As for elements, uh, you know what are elements and how to derive their valencies. I have explained before under atomic uh, structure. Uh, all the group 1 elements, all of them have one electron in the outermost shell. So, as a result, they are not stable because just having one electron, so they lose that electron. When atom loses electron, they will develop a unipositive charge. So the valency of the group one elements will be plus one. The valence is a charge acquired by atom by losing or by gaining electrons. So likewise, the group two has two electrons. So rather than gaining six to make it eight, it is easy to lose two. So therefore, valency of group two is plus two. Group 3 is plus 3, group 4 is plus or minus 4, it can lose 4 or gain 4. Group 5 is minus 3, it, has, it can gain 3, right? Because other than losing 5 to form plus 5, gaining 3 is easier, less energy required. So group 6 gains 2 electrons, gaining of each electron uh, gives the atom the negative charge. Group 7 gains 1 and that's minus 1, the valency. Group 8, they will not lose or gain electrons because they are stable. Uh, that's the reason why we call the group 8 as zeroth group because they don't form, uh, they don't have any valency, neither they form any compounds or bonds. So that's why it's called the group 0, right? So if you know the valencies of elements, we don't memorize the valencies because the periodic table is given at the exam, so that is not necessary to memorize. And also these, this block here over here, that's known as the D block. Uh, this block, uh, you will know in A levels why we call this as D block. Uh, they have multivalencies, meaning more than one valency. So you can't predict the valency of these elements. Except for the first and the last one, the very first one, which is uh, scandium and very last one which is zinc. They have fixed valences, scandium is plus 3, zinc is plus 2. It's so easy to remember this because after 2 is 3, right here, and before 3 is 2, right, so that, that's, that those two you have to remember the valences. Other than that, the rest of it you are not supposed to know because they show more than one valency. So some of the uh, elements in the uh, in the group 4 also show multivalence such as lead, tin. Some of these elements also show multivalences, right? But generally you can say the valence is 4, but sometimes they also show uh, plus 2 valences, right? So anyway, the atoms which has multivalence, you are not supposed to worry about them because the valence will be given in the question. So once you know the valency. Let us see how to write the formula. If I am to, uh, if I tell you to write the formula of aluminium oxide, right? The first step is to write the symbol of the elements. Aluminium and oxygen, right? Aluminium is Al. Oxygen, oxide is oxygen, which is O. Now. Whenever element has more than one letter, right, like in the case of aluminium, silicon, chlorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, beryllium, lithium, they have more than one letter. You notice the second letter, you notice always the second letter is lowercase, simple. Whenever element has two letters, the second letter will be lowercase, a simple letter, right? So, aluminium, like when you write the valence, the, the formula, second letter should be simple. This is a common error done by many. For example, the chlorine, 
Second letter is simple. Many I have seen writing chlorine like this, which is wrong. Second letter cannot be capital. Whenever atom has two letters, two letters, the second letter is always simple. And here the oxide, oxide, I will shortly explain why we end with ide, right? Why don't we call oxygen, aluminium, oxygen, sodium, chlorine, isodium, chloride, potassium, oxide. Why not potassium, oxygen? So sometimes you end the name with ide. Sometimes you name end the name with ite, right? Sodium, sulfite. Sometimes you end the name with it, sodium sulfate. I'm going to explain shortly uh, when to use these uh, a suffix id, it, and it, right? So for the time being, remember, if they give as id as a suffix, which means it is the element, right? That means it's one of the elements in the periodic table, which is referring to. So you might wonder what can it be other than element, because more than one element combines to form a compound. There's something called radicals, which I explain shortly. Okay, so radicals, you end up with it or id, uh, it or uh, it, right? That is, I'll explain that later. So, let us see how to write a formula of a simple element like compound like aluminium oxide. First, you write the symbols and then you write the valency. Aluminium, group 3, it's plus 3. Oxygen, group 6 is minus 2. It's not a must to write the sign, uh, the plus and the minus for valencies. Only for oxidation numbers we write the plus and minus. For valency is not a must. Oxidation numbers we'll be studying later on under inorganic chemistry. Right? So we do combine. What you do is you cross the valency. Valency of aluminium goes to oxygen and valency of oxygen goes to aluminium. Right? So you get the answer as Al2O3. So aluminium oxide will be Al2O3, right? Uh, if it is a multivalency element, like in the case of copper, uh, then the valency of the cation will be given in capital Roman numerals in brackets. Copper 1 oxide means copper is plus 1, right? And oxygen. Now you might wonder why, how do you know it's plus 1? It can be minus 1. Remember always when you write the name, the cation is written first. The positive ion is written first, the cation. So metals always lose electrons and form cations. Therefore, copper is plus 1. So I write the symbol. And oxygen is minus 2. So Cu2O. Oh. Is it clear? So, yeah. So id is id means it's ending with element. Another example. If it is lead four oxide Pb and O, lead is plus four, oxygen is minus two, you cross the valences, you get Pb two O four. Now there's an extra rule here. Whatever you cross, that is the valency. If you can simplify the valency, you should simplify. Now, in this case, 2 and 4 can be simplified and given as PbO2. Can be given as PbO2. Right? You simplify only what you cross. Clear? Right? So, if you can simplify them, then you should simplify it. So we'll go uh, do a few examples, then you'll understand the concept even better. So valency of an element is equal to the number of positive or negative charge acquired by the atom by losing or by gaining electrons. Write down the rules of writing a chemical formula. Write down the symbols of the elements or radicals. I'll explain shortly what are radicals. Given in the chemical name of the compound, write down the valencies of each element or radical under the corresponding symbol. Cross them over as shown below. In this given uh, space, you can copy the example of alumina, which is aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide example is the top one. 
copy this aluminum oxide example there. The valence is the simplest combining ratio and may be cancelled down in order to simplify in the given space here. I'll copy the two examples of copper 1 oxide and lead 4 oxide. You have to use capital Roman numerals, not simple Roman numerals. I hope you know the capital Roman numerals at least up to 10, right? So that is, this is 1, 2, likewise 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, you don't get more than eight anyway, nine, ten, right, okay, copy these two, two examples, so if the element has more than one valency, then the compound will indicate the valence in capital Roman numerals. So why noble gases forming no compounds? Because as I explained, they are stable because they have completely filled out the motion of electrons. Let us see the valency of these elements. Uh, elements which show multivalency are not supposed to memorize the valency. So hydrogen has one electron. Uh, so there are two val valencies for hydrogen. Hydrogen can lose that electron and form plus one that's known as the hydrogen ion or it can gain an electron and form minus one valency to make it two because hydrogen has only one energy level so it can lose electrons or gain electrons um, so it can form hydrogen ion or hydride ion when element gains electrons that's referred to as hydride so always remember the suffix ide is used for the anions, negative ones, negative ones, elements which are negatively charged, right? That is elements which are negatively charged. You use uh, ide at the end, negative element. Carbon uh, plus four or minus four. Nitrogen is group five minus three. Oxygen. I want to remember these because periodic table you can easily predict. So sodium group 1 plus 1, magnesium group group 2 plus 2, aluminium group 3 plus 3, silicon plus or minus 4, phosphorus minus 3, sulfur minus 2, chlorine minus 1, group 7, calcium plus 2, manganese plus 2 or plus 7, don't memorize it, multivalency, iron ferrospheric plus 2 plus 3, cobalt plus 2, copper, plus 1, or plus 2, cuprous, cupric, the different names, these ions have different names. I will explain that when you're writing the names. I zinc is plus 2, lead is plus 2, plus 4, mercury is plus 2, and silver is plus 1. Copy the valency of these elements. Valences can be predicted by looking at the periodic table. If it is a multivalency element like the D block, uh, the first and the last you can predict, but the rest uh, they will give. Right. As for the radicals, radicals are combination of more than one element with the overall charge. Right? Uh, radicals, hydroxide is minus one, nitrite is minus one, nitrate is minus one, sulfite. That's a combination of more than one element with overall charge. Now when it comes to radicals, they have different valencies. Carbonate is minus two, hydrogen carbonate, also referred to as bicarbonate, minus one, hydrogen sulfate, bisulfate, hydrogen sulfite and sulfate, minus one, phosphate is minus three, manganate seven is minus one, dichromate, and thiosulfate is minus 2. Now these are the valencies of radicals. Now in counts of radicals, you notice you end the name with it or with 8, not ide, right, except for hydroxide. I'll explain why only this is ide. Others all you see it or 8, it or 8, except for the cation, 
You can see the cation is ammonium, not ammoniate or ammoniite, right? Because the atanite is only for the cations, oh, sorry, the anions, where you end. Ammonium is a cation, so when you're writing the name, that's the only radical which you write first, because cations are written first, the anions are written next. But that's why you don't end ammonium with atoid. Atoid, id, atoid are the ways you, the suffix there, how, do, how you end the name. Okay, so now this is it, sometimes it, sometimes it. So how do you know which situation is it, which situation is it? It's very easy to remember. Always in the number of oxygens are greater, it's eight. Eight is a higher number. It is a lower number of oxygen. Now you have NO2 minus 1 is a lower number of oxygen. So it's it. NO3, higher number, it's 8. Right? So if it's a higher number, it's 8. The lower number is it. Is that clear? Okay. So some radicals you can predict the valency. Now see for example hydrogen carbonate also referred to as bicarbonate. So you know carbonate is minus 2. This is hydrogen carbonate. This carbonate is minus 2 and hydrogen is plus 1 because the first one is positive. So plus 1 and minus 2 together it will give overall charge of minus 1. So you can work out some of them. Likewise, hydrogen sulfide, bisulfide, or hydrogen sulfate, bisulfate, sulfide and sulfate, if you look here, it's minus 2. Right? So, hydrogen is plus 1, sulfate, sulfide, minus 2, so overall is minus 1. So some of them you can work out. Manganate 7, manganate 7, this 7 here, Roman 7, 7 is the oxidation state of manganese. Oxidation state is same as valency. Right? This is plus 7. Manganese is plus 7. If manganese is plus 7, oxygen we know is minus 2. Each oxygen minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. So plus 7 and minus 8 is minus 1. Plus 7 and minus 8 is minus 1. That's why manganate 7 is minus 1. Dichromate is minus 2. Again, dichromate, chromium is 7, that 6. They are given the valency, here bracket is the valency of chromium, not the whole thing. So if chromium is plus 6, there are two chromiums here, so it's plus 12, and oxygen is minus 14. Minus 2 times 7 is minus 14. So plus 12 and minus 14 is minus 2. So some of them, you can work out the valencies. Not all. So how about the elements which you cannot work out? Like nitrite, nitrate. Remember always, if it's 8, number of oxygen greater. 8, number of oxygen is less. So how to remember this? There are only few radicals, like uh, about 12 or 13 radicals, out of which hydrogen, bicarbonate, bisulfate, hydrogen sulfate, hydrogen carbonate, all those you can work out. These three and the last two you can easily work out. And thiosulfate, of course, we should remember. The others you have to remember. So how to remember? You can easily use photographic memory for that. Anything if you need to remember which is difficult for you to remember, Write in a piece of paper and stick it uh, next to your bed or somewhere in the room or, or vehicle or wherever it is. You keep looking, keep watching. That's known as a photographic memory. And you keep looking at uh, a thing which you will remember. And that's very powerful. Right? So you can just keep, make a small, don't write everything in one chart because it's too much. You can write three or four and just stick in different places. You can notice after a few days you have mastered the radicals. As for the elements, nothing to worry because periodic table is given. So I find uh, if you, uh, this is very important because if you can't write a proper formula, you can't do chemistry because this is the foundation of all the foundations in chemistry. A person who cannot write a formula and doing chemistry is like a person who is 
who doesn't know 1 plus 1 is 2 and he's doing mathematics for all levels. He doesn't know addition. So you know what happens at the end. So similar thing you have to face if you are uh, not careful about writing the or if you do mistakes writing the formula because if your formula is wrong then you can't balance equations. If your balancing goes wrong you can't find the number of moles, stoichiometric molar ratio, concentration, everything goes wrong. Everything goes wrong. Right? So you have to remember the right radicals. For today you can look at the cute, right? So I want to emphasize the difference here. Uh, difference between eight, eight and eight. Look here. Tell me the first one. What's the name of this? Element. So element always. That's right. Eight. This is night. Ride. Eight. Second one. Less number of nitrogen. Night, right, correct. The number of oxygens are more. Night, right, nitrate. Eight is a high number of oxygen. How about this? Can you tell me the answer for this? One, right in the order. Sulfide, that's correct. Next. Sulfide, correct. The last one, sal, fate. Okay. You can just uh, highlight this on top of question six, just to distinguish the difference between eight, eight, and eight. Okay. So let us see how to write um, the formula where radicals are involved. Right. So, if I say to write the formula of, say, ammonium phosphate, now two radicals are involved there. So, ammonium is positive, so you should write that first. And the phosphate is negative. You should write that next. So, ammonium, NH4, so write the formula, plus 1, phosphate, PO4, minus 3. And now you cross the valences. When you cross the valences, the entire three counts to the ammonium ion. You put a bracket and put three because that three belongs to entire ammonium. And then the phosphate, we don't show the one. We don't show the one. So when it comes to radical, which is a combination of more than one element, if there's a number to be uh, shared, then you put a bracket and put that number. Right? So remember, when counts radicals, there will be a charge. For example, NO2 minus is night, right? But not NO2. NO2 is nitrogen dioxide because there's no charge here. Radicals will always carry a charge. Only for radicals, we name I10, 8 for negatively charged radical, right? Only exceptional is the uh, uh, hydroxide. Only this is eyed. The reason is it's not easy upon the tongue to say hydroxate or hydroxide. It's, it's a little difficult, right? With a lot of effort to be put hydroxide or hydroxate. So hydroxide is much easier to pronounce. So that that's only exceptional there. So NO2 is not nitrite. That's nitrogen dioxide. Likewise, SO3 is not sulfide. It's sulfur trioxide. If it is sulfide, it will carry a charge, right? So, a simple molecules like, for example, you can use this prefix mono, di, tri to name them. For example, if I say CO2, it's carbon dioxide, dioxide in short, we say, two is, di is two. How about CO, carbon mono, Oxide. Mono is one. Monoxide in short we say. What is this? Yeah. Capital C, capital O is carbon monoxide. If capital C is sim and simple O, what is this? This is one element, right? 
is one element, second letter is simple. Look here, it's cobalt. This is not carbon monoxide, this is the periodic table of elements. It's one element, cobalt. Look at the importance of uh, writing the uh, uh, the capitals properly, right? So sulfur trioxide, SO3, carbon tri is 3, monoditri, tetracarbon, tetrachloride, another way to name them, sulfur or phosphorus pentachloride, penta is 5, sulfur hexafluoride, so mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa. They are used for naming compounds, molecules, not radicals. Clear? And also when you're writing the names, now look, tell me the mistake of this formula. This is this mistake done by even A-level students. What's the mistake of this formula? This is sulfuric acid. O should be capital, that's right, because otherwise you have to take this as one element. There's no SO, element called SO. What's the mistake of potassium permanganate formula? The K and the O, that's right. The K has to be capital and O has to be capital. That's very important. Why I highlighted this? Because even A-level students, I notice they write formula wrong that way. Right? So, another example where our radical is involved. Uh, aluminium sulfate. Aluminium and sulfate. Aluminium is plus 3. Sulfate is minus 2. You cross the valencies. Al2 SO4 thrice. Now can you simplify this? Can or can't? No, because simplification is only for what you cross. You can't now simplify this 4 and 2 because this 4 is not, red, not the valency. This is part of the formula. You can't simplify that number. You can only simplify the what you cross, the valencies. Now even here, you can't simplify this 4 and this 4 together, right? Because this is part of the formula. Clear? Okay, so mono, di, tri, tetra, pentra, remember that when you're writing the names and remember all is the way radicals will carry a charge. So we'll start writing the uh, formula. Since we are practicing, I want you to follow the steps. Don't just write the formula. Write these three steps. Right? Follow the three steps. Sodium hydroxide. Sodium is plus one. Just because, just after you practice, you can later write, directly write. So sodium sulfate plus one sulfate SO4 minus two. You cross the valencies, you get Na2. SO4, right? Aluminium oxide, plus 3, minus 2, you cross the valencies, Al2O3. You can start writing the formula of page 2 and 3 now. So in iron 2 sulfate here, you don't put a bracket. Just look at this one. You don't put a bracket because it's 2 and 2 get cancelled. So FeSO4, right? So I had done the ones on the page 2. You can copy them and try the next page. We'll parallel do along with you. Uh, please don't look at the board. You can do it yourself and then at last we'll check. 
Levin will know which one is wrong, then I can help you on that. Potassium bicarbonate, right? Uh, if you are done, you can please check the answers. Check the answers, please. Shall I move the board? Don't correct it. Let me know. I need to explain why it's wrong. Anything got it wrong? Lead nitrate, okay. Where is lead nitrate? Or lead 2 nitrate. Thing is, second letter should be lowercase, right? Keep that in mind always. And put a bracket if it is a radical involved. And uh, when you're naming hydrogen sulfate, the correct name is sulfuric acid. Because when you just say hydrogen sulfate, it can be the radical, it can mean the radical uh, bisulfate, but here you can't just have the radical alone. So that's what we know this hydrogen and sulfate, because you can't have a formula just HSO4 minus, that's because some, something else combining with it, right? So that's why this is not the radical, this is the, the sulfuric acid, same for hydrogen nitrate, it's in fact nitric acid, right? So now you know how to write the formula when the name is given. So the most important thing is the radicals. I hope you will take some effort, memorize. I, I feel, I have I, I found many who find it hard to write the formula. The only reason is the radicals, right? Because elements, they never go wrong because periodic table uh, has the elements. The only point where they go wrong is the radicals. So make sure you take some effort to remember the radicals. So next let us see how to write the name when the formula is given. That's naming compounds. Now when naming compounds is the opposite. So for example the first one calcium sulfate, right? So when you're naming calcium sulfate, right? And also, if it's ending with a uh, element, you have to use ide, ide, also for hydroxide. So this is barium chloride. We don't say barium dichloride for this, no, just barium chloride. We don't say aluminium trichloride for this, aluminium chloride, because this three has come from aluminium. Aluminium nitrate, aluminium sulfate. But when it comes to the multivalency elements, like iron, lead, copper, zinc is not multivalency. I explained zinc, the first and the last, they are not multivalency. There is no need for you to write the valency in brackets. But if it is a multivalency element, you have to write the valency in capital Roman numerals in brackets. Which means, I can't say, for example, this as iron sulfate. If I call this as iron sulfate, is wrong. Because iron got two sulfates. Iron two sulfate and iron three sulfate. Iron got two radicals. So you have to show what sulfate of iron is this. So how to do that? You have to do a small calculation. The sulfate is minus two, right? Therefore iron will be plus two. So this is iron to sulfate. To write the valency in capital Roman numerals in brackets. Likewise, if it's a multivalency element only, like iron, copper, lead, otherwise you don't. We don't say, for example, for this aluminium 3 sulfate, then you're wrong. Aluminium is not a multivalency element. You don't say zinc 2 chloride, that's wrong because zinc is not a multivalency element. So how about something like this? Say Fe. Cl2. Then you calculate, you take iron as x, chlorine is minus 2, minus 1 into 2 is minus 2, equals 0, so x is plus 2. 
So plus 2 pi n minus 2 for chlorine is 0. Likewise, if you have one like this, PbO, oxygen is minus 2, so let this plus 2. PbO2, right? Oxygen is minus 2 times 2. Minus 2 times 2 is what? Minus 4. Therefore, let this plus 4. This is lead 4 oxide. This is lead 4 oxide. Right? How about this one? Fe2. SO4 thrice. Sulfate is minus 2, right? Minus iron should be plus 6. Total should be 0. Because there are two ions, both the ions are plus 6. One ion will be plus 3. So this is iron 3 sulfate, not iron 6 sulfate. There is no 6 for iron. Clear? So you have to calculate the valency if it is multivalency element like iron, lead, copper. Okay, is that clear? Which one is confusing? You, you, uh, it is clear that uh, iron sulfate, what you do is just sum is equal to zero always, right? Now see the sulfate, you know it's minus two. Right, so the iron should be plus two, is that clear? I, I just go one by one, yeah minus 2 and this is iron is plus 2. So the iron 2 sulfate. Look at the simple one. This is chlorine is minus 1. There are two chlorines. Minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. So this entire chlorine is minus 2. Iron should be plus 2. So total is always 0. So iron 2 chloride. Is that clear? Then lead. Le oxygen is minus 2. So lead has to be plus 2. Because total is zero. So let two oxide. Ha as for these, oxygen is minus two, but there are two oxygens. So minus two times two is what? Minus four. So lead has to be plus four. Plus four and minus four is zero. Now see, lead four oxide. This is lead four oxide. So lead plus four, oxygen minus two. When you cross the valences, Pb2O4. When you simplify, you get what? PbO2. You get this, right? So this is lead 4 oxide. Is that clear? Same uh, with the help of the valences and so also with the help of the suffix ik and us. Now where do you use ik and us suffix when you're naming the cation? Like I explained before how to where to use id eight and uh, eight. We use for the cation uh, ik and us. Ik is for the higher oxidation number. Us is lower. For example, uh, for iron, this is iron two chloride. This is iron two chloride. And the bottom one is iron three chloride. So we can also name in a different way. We can say for this ferric, this is ferrous chloride, and the bottom one is ferric chloride. Now where to use ik, where to use us? When the oxidation number is greater, like 3, we use the suffix ik. Right? When the oxidation number is low, is us. So you don't say ionous or ionic, we say ferrous, ferric. Right? Likewise, cuprous, cupric. Cuprous, cupric. Right? This is copper, one chloride. Copper, two chloride. Which one is, what's the top one? Cuprous or cupric? The higher number is ik. Yeah, this is lower number. Cuprous chloride. Cupric chloride. So for copper becomes cup, iron becomes ferrous, ferrate, uh, ferrous and ferric. 
and the lead we don't say lead as leadic we use the term plumbus plumbic for lead plumbus the lower number plumbic oxide plumbus oxide that's not very important but I prefer if you know this name also but it's more important for the A levels but if you can name only using the Roman numerals, that's fine. If you find this part, you see sometimes they give cupric chloride. So you should know cupric is what? It's very, very rare to such questions in all levels, but just to complete the chapter, I introduce that ic is for high oxidation state, us or low oxidation state. Right? Is it clear? I'll give you about uh, five minutes or four minutes. You can start writing the names and we'll check at the end. I hope uh, this correction is done in your tute. KCRO4 should be written as K2CR207. Also, we'll check the answers. Uh, if your answer is wrong, just uh, say it's wrong. I'll stop and explain why. Calcium sulfate, barium chloride, aluminium chloride, aluminium nitrate, aluminium sulfate, iron 2 sulfate. 2 should be in capital Roman numerals in brackets. Iron 2 sulfate or ferrous sulfate. Okay. Look here, I have explained that in the corner. Iron 3 chloride, ferric chloride, iron 3 sulfate, ferric sulfate. Okay. This is lead 2 oxide. Plumbus oxide, lead four oxide, plumbic oxide, lead two nitrate, plumbus nitrate, we know two is lower, four is higher, lead two chloride. Plum, plumbus chloride, lead 2 sulfate, plum, plumbus sulfate, clear? So far okay. Uh, copper 2 nitrate, cupric nitrate. Copper 1 chloride, cuprous chloride, uh, copper 2 chloride, cupric chloride, copper 2 sulfate, cupric sulfate, for this don't say zinc 2 chloride, just say zinc chloride. This is just silver nitrate, not silver one nitrate, silver nitrate, just ammonium chloride, ammonium chloride, ammonium sulfate, ammonium sulfate, potassium chromate, sorry, potassium dichromate this. Potassium dichromate or potassium chromate 6 also you can say, but you can just say dichromate. Yeah, potassium uh, dichromate is Cr2O7 dichromate 6, so you can just say potassium dichromate for this. Because Cr2O7 I gave under the radical list is dichromate. 
So this is potassium dichromate. Clear? No need to write that six next to the name. That's not necessary. Ammonium carbonate, potassium hydrogen carbonate, or slash you can say potassium bicarbonate. Write both the names, both correct. Potassium hydrogen carbonate. Say potassium bicarbonate. Cobalt nitrate. You can say cobalt two nitrate also. Yes, that's okay. Cobalt two nitrate. Yes. And sodium nitrite. Ite. Sodium nitrite. Sodium nitrite. Okay. All correct or anything to be clarified further? Go on. The last one is nitrite. Ite. Because lower number of oxygen. NO2. With NO3, nitrate. With sodium nitrate nitrite. NO3 is nitrate. NO2 is nitrite. So this is sodium nitrite. What did you write there? Nitrate is NO3. High number is 8. This is NO2. Okay. So what you should do is uh, after the class, not immediately, before you go to bed tonight, revise this. It's very important. Right? You take a piece of paper, write all the names again as it is given in the tute. Another paper, write all these uh, symbols and practice. And write in different places the radicals. Right? Then you keep looking at them, you remember. So with that we conclude the naming of compounds. And next to complete the tute, uh, I will explain the uh, uh, balancing equations. Balancing equations, what we do here is equalizing the number of elements on one side of the equation to the other side. When balancing elements, you are only allowed to write a number front of each species. Right? Just ignore these blanks given in some questions because the blanks are in wrong places sometimes. So in the first question, there are two hydrogens on the left side and two on the right side. Hydrogen is balanced. Two oxygens on the left side and one on the right side. So what you can do is you can do two front of water in order to balance the oxygen. When you balance the oxygen, then the hydrogen will be imbalanced. Then you put two front of this hydrogen to balance the hydrogen. So two times two is four hydrogens. Two times two is four hydrogens here. Two oxygens, two oxygens. All the elements are balanced. So generally, uh, when balancing is easy when it comes to complex reaction, starting with the cation to balance is much easier than starting with the anion. Now look at this. One barium, one barium. Barium is balanced. One sodium, one sodium. Sodium is balanced. Two oxygens and two hydrogens. Right? And two chlorines. So what you can do is put two front of sodium chloride to balance the chlorine. Chlorine is balanced and two front of sodium hydroxide to balance the sodium. Sodium is balanced then as well as the hydrogen and oxygen because this number two belongs to both hydrogen and oxygen. Means there are two hydrogens and two oxygens. So it's like two hydrogens, two oxygens here. So it's balanced now. The next one, I can identify the potassium, the cation is not balanced. So I balance the cation first. 
Generally, most cases you start with the cation is easier. Not always. On the first one, we decide the cation, right? And then you notice sulfur is balanced. One sulfur, one sulfur. Potassium is balanced. As for oxygen and hydrogen is not balanced. Two hydrogens here. Two hydrogens here. Two plus two, four hydrogens, right? So I put two front of water to balance the hydrogen, four hydrogen. And as for the oxygen, there's two plus four, six oxygens. Two plus four, six oxygens. The oxygen is balanced. Okay. So sometimes uh, you get situations where uh, situations like this, where you have to put uh, a fraction. So lead nitrate giving lead oxide, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Look at this. Lead is already balanced. To balance the nitrogen, there's two nitrogens and six oxygens. To balance the nitrogen, I put two front of nitrogen dioxide. The nitrogen is balanced. Right? And as for the oxygen, there is six oxygens here on the reactant side. Three times two is six. This two belongs to both nitrogen and oxygen. So six oxygens. Look at the product side. One, two times two, four. So four plus one is five. Six, seven. There's extra oxygen here. So to get rid of that extra oxygen, what we can do is you can put half front of oxygen. You are allowed to put fractions, but not decimals. You can't put 0.5 or 6.5, no. You can put half or 13 over 2, not 6.5. So half times 2 is 1. Right, so the oxygen is 1 here. 2 times 2, 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Plus 1, 6, so oxygen is balanced. So you're allowed to use fractions and start with the cation, then move on to the anion. Is that clear? Also, you can get rid of this half by multiplying the whole equation by 2. But that's not a must to do. If you multiply the whole equation by 2, 2, 2, 4, and 1. We don't write 1 unless at the exam there is a blank like this given. When there is a blank given, you have to put something there. Otherwise, it will be counted as you have not answered. When there is a blank given, you put number 1. Otherwise, you don't write number 1. Okay? So, you can start balancing now 1 to 10. Only 1 to 10. Right? And we'll check the answers. And if everything is correct, we'll go on to the next page. Start. Page. I have given the answer, so you can check for yourself. Uh, is there answer in the last page? I don't know that I have attached that page, answer page also. You can check for yourself. Is that page there? The answer page? Okay, so you can check. Four, six, yeah, it's balanced now. The sixth one as well. You can check your answers. So nitrate, there's two, so put two front of sodium nitrate and two front of sodium iodide. Then the iodine is balanced, the sodium is balanced. The rest of the elements are balanced. There's two aluminiums here on the question eight. So balance the cation first. Two aluminium. Uh, two sodium. Two sodium, so aluminium is balanced. Sulfate has three. No, this is wrong. Because there's three sulfates. So when I try to balance the sulfate after balancing sodium, it gets imbalanced. So sulfate should be sulfate should be balanced first. 
So three sulfur and then the sodium will be six. This is very important because there's here in this case anion should be balanced first of course because otherwise the cation get imbalanced again. So three sulfur, front of sulfate you put three, six sodiums, three times two six sodiums. Right? Now it's balanced. Two aluminium, two aluminium. This one, the ninth one, and let me balance. So there is uh, three plus one four hydrogen. So you put two front of water, four hydrogen. Hydrogen is balanced. 2 plus 2, 4 oxygens, 3 plus 1, 4 oxygens, sodium is balanced, oxygen is balanced, hydrogen is balanced. So next one, you can simply put half and balance it or you multiply the whole equation by 2, in that case 2, 2, 4, right? Uh, 1 to 10, is it okay? Okay, we'll try the next page then. Try all. And, right, uh, sulfur is already balanced. 1 plus 1, 2. 8 oxygen. 3 plus 2, 5 plus 3, 8, so it's balanced. Start balancing with the cation first. There's 4 carbons, 10 hydrogens, that means 5 water, 5 times 2, 10. Done now. Seventeenth. okay, fine. Right, so there's eight here, so to make it eight, we put two front of nitrogen monoxide. So now check eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens, eight nitrogens, here are two times three, six plus two, eight nitrogens, nitrogen balance, three copper, three copper balance, twenty four oxygens, three times eight, twenty four oxygens, here is six times three, eighteen, plus two, twenty, plus four, twenty four. Right, so try the next 18th one. How about the 18th one? So what you do is you try the last five. The answers are given at the back of the tube. So try it slowly. If anything is difficult, you don't know how to, how to work out the values, let me know next class. I will uh, do the, I keep the last five because it takes some time, which is the last one. It takes some time. And also I'll give you a special question at last after you finish everything. Just try this. If you can do this, then you can handle any question. Writing equations in symbols. That's also you can try, uh, simply uh, you write the symbol and then uh, you have to write the state symbols as well for solid metals or solids. So S is for the solid, gas is G, solution AQ, aqueous. Like for example, zinc metal reacting with copper sulfate, copper 2 sulfate, gives copper metal and zinc sulfate. It's a solution. So solution is aqueous, copper metal, solid, copper sulfate solution, aqueous, zinc, solid. So you have to construct the equation and then balance it. So balancing, uh, you can do it, right? 
So likewise, you can try this question as well. I will check the answers in the next row. State symbol should be written below, like subscript. Say so zinc solid should be subscript. Hydrogen gas should be subscript, like this. Okay. Yeah, if it's solution, it's equals. Generally, metals are written as uh, the. If you don't know the state symbols, it's okay. Just leave it. If it is like, for example, silicon tetrachloride, they are not given. It's actually it's a liquid, so don't need to worry about that. Reacting with water, silicon dioxide, solid silicon dioxide, silicon dioxide is sand, solid, and hydrogen chloride dimension as gas. So, so you can try this question also. Just write the equation. Yes, of course you can send the pictures. I will attend to that. You can send it through WhatsApp. Okay. And uh, WhatsApp or the Viber, it's fine. Right, so the last two I will explain if it's difficult. Here the halide, you should take the halide as H2. So you have fluorine, chlorine, bromine. So commonly you take as X2. And for the metal, you take as M. Reacting with water. This M, okay? So we'll see you next time then.